When our AI searches the web, it's pulling information from various websites and articles. But users might wonder, where is this information coming from? Can I verify it? Is it from reliable sources? This is where source citations come in. When the AI performs a web search, it can return not just the information, but also the URLs of the sources it used. This transparency is important for building trust and allowing users to verify facts, read more details, or judge the credibility of sources themselves. The AI SDK makes it incredibly easy to include sources in web search results. Let's dive in and add this feature. In the web search tool route handler, we already have web search working with Anthropic's model. To include sources in the response, we just need one small change. In the return statement, when calling to UI message stream response, we will add the send sources option. So object, send sources, and set it to true. When send sources is true, the AI SDK sends source parts to the client. Now, before we update the UI, let's understand what these source parts are, which is what the UI will be receiving. In the AI SDK, a UI message can have various parts. We've already seen text parts, file parts, and tool parts. Now, we are getting a new type called source parts, or source URL UI part to be more accurate. Each source part has a few properties. Type set to source hyphen URL, so we can identify it in page.tsx. Source ID, which is a unique identifier. URL pointing to the source website. An optional title, which is the page title. And finally, optional provider metadata, which is the additional information from the provider. These parts are included alongside the text and tool parts when the AI uses web search. Let's see how we can extract and display these sources in the UI. Inside the messages.map function, before we render anything, let's filter out the sources. So let's change the parentheses into curly braces and add a return statement. This now allows us to add our new code. Const sources is equal to message dot parts dot filter. We pass in a callback function, which receives the part, and we filter out by part type. So part dot type is equal to source hyphen URL. We are filtering the message parts to find only those with type source hyphen URL. This gives us an array of all sources used for this particular message. Now we can display these sources immediately after the web search complete tool call UI. So expand the div, find, output available, and wrap the current UI in a fragment so we can add the sources right after it. So wrap the div in React fragment. After this div tag, we will render our list of sources. We'll start with curly braces. We will only show sources for assistant messages since users don't have sources. So message dot role is equal to assistant. And we will also check if we have sources to show. And sources dot length is greater than zero. If these are true, we will render the list. We'll render a div tag with some bottom margin. And now we can add a nice container with a blue background and a border. So div with some Tailwind classes, which I'm going to paste to save us some time. Within this container div, add a header showing how many sources we have. So another div, a span tag that renders the count of sources. So sources, parentheses, and within the parentheses, we will render sources.length. Let me add some styling to the div tag as well as the span tag. Next, let's render each source as a clickable link. So another div tag with some vertical spacing between each link, so space y2, curly braces to render the sources. So sources.map, we specify a callback function. We get access to the source part and the index. And within the function body, if 
par.type is equal to source URL, just to be on the safer side, we return an anchor tag. The text is going to be part.title if that exists. Otherwise, we fall back to part.url. On the anchor tag, we specify the key prop. So key is going to be message.id followed by the index. href is equal to part.url. Target is equal to blank. rel is equal to no opener and no referrer. We'll add some tailwind classes for styling. And finally, title is equal to part.url. So each source becomes a link that opens in a new tab, has security attributes, shows the full URL on hover, and truncates long URLs to fit the container. If a source has a title, we use that instead of the URL. That is pretty much it. In output available, we render our web search complete tool called UI, followed by the list of sources. One thing I realize is the key prop should be present on the React fragment. So let's change this to React fragment with the key. Import React at the top. All right, let's save the file and test this out. In the browser, navigate to slash UI slash web search tool and enter the same prompt as before. What's the latest version of Next.js as of August 26th, 2025? And what are the main changes? Press enter and watch what happens. The AI searches the web, so searching the web. The web search completes, and we now see a blue box of sources appear below the tool called UI. We see these sources that were used to answer the question. Click on any source to verify the information. You can see exactly where the AI got its facts. We have successfully added source citations to our web search tool. Let me quickly summarize what we did. First, we enabled sources in the route handler response. Send sources set to true for to UI message stream response. We filtered message parts to extract source URL parts. For the web search tool, for case output available, we added a React fragment, wrapped the tool call UI, and then added a dedicated UI section for sources. We made sources clickable for verification. Now that I think about it, this might render multiple times for an OpenAI web search. So please feel free to move this section around based on your UI requirements. Instead of blindly trusting the AI, users can now verify information, explore topics deeper, and judge source credibility.